five years to the day from the signing of the Indus Water Treaty, the course of the Jhelum River was turned through the tunnels and the riverbed ran dry. Now work crews could move into the riverbed gap at the main dam site and begin to excavate to foundation. Diversion had been one of the key dates on the job. Everything to this point had focused on that one event. Now there was a shift of emphasis. The entire purpose of all work from now on was to get each part of the job finished as quickly as possible. Maximum efficiency was the keynote of the entire Mangla operation. And to keep things running at that rate meant thousands of spare parts carefully stored, their location and quantity filed and cross-indexed to assure ready availability. Because of the remoteness of the job, it was necessary to stockpile everything from carburetor jets to automatic transmissions to complete engines. 1,200 mechanics, most of them trained on the job, kept everything running. But you can only repair and replace for so long. Eventually, a complete overhaul is required. Crankshafts had to be reground. Diesel engines had to be stripped apart and reconditioned. The hard surface metal was replaced on tractor rollers. When you're three months away from your nearest source of supply, the simpler you can make life, the better. For all of this, the equipment of the people who could do the job were at Mangla. When you've got 13,000 workmen on a job, communications is a problem. When they speak different languages, it can be even more of a problem. As the job at Mangla became more complex, so did the lives of the people. Basic safety practices had been emphasized from the beginning. A fully equipped fire department was on duty continuously. It served both the job site and the community. Emergency ambulances were stationed at key points ready to aid injured personnel or speed them to the hospital for medical attention. The modern 80-bed hospital was fully equipped and staffed. Here, all medical problems could be handled, from the routine matters of minor home and job accidents to major surgery. The hospital isn't the only place where proper diet is essential. Realizing this, the contractor established a 25-acre food farm. Poultry, eggs, fresh produce, from bananas to corn, to okra, to lettuce and melons. Practically everything was grown at the farm, which supplied fresh produce to the labor camps and to the Baral Colony supermarket. supermarket was just part of the complete shopping facility at Mangle. The 
colony was by now a thriving town with 500 homes and bachelor quarters for 110. The key personnel the contractor had brought here were a long way from the States. But in this case, they were about as close to home as they could be and still be 9,000 miles away. Because of the duration of the project, families would spend at least 30 months at the job site. Some of them would remain throughout the entire job. The town resembled a modern American community, complete with all the activities of suburbia. It may seem an extravagance to create a small town USA in the desert of Pakistan, but the colony proved to be a most economical expenditure. The international elementary school was complete from playground to PTA. Just because they were a long way from home didn't keep the kids from acting like they always do. Students in the high school had a full and complete curriculum. With a diploma from the high school, a graduating senior was prepared to qualify for admission to any American university or college. A special section of the school library served the community as well. But it wasn't all work. Recreation facilities were abundant, including two swimming pools, one of Olympic size. And there was recreation for the adults, too. Golf on the nine-hole course at the country club, complete with club pro, and a rope tow for that long climb back to the clubhouse from the last green. In the evenings and on weekends, there was bowling on the ten lanes at the Mangla alleys. There were some pretty fair averages, and a few who would just as soon forget about the whole thing. A fine restaurant with a menu of gourmet delights was a popular place to get together. About all Mangla lacked was a freeway traffic jam. By now, excavation was complete and the concrete crews were at work covering the 55-acre area of the main spillway. Supports for the pre-stressed concrete spillway gate anchorages were being placed. Spillway design is a submerged intake type with nine radial gates, each 36 feet wide and 40 feet high. The pressure was still on and work went ahead at full speed. Sometimes other things went ahead at full speed too. With a two day holiday coming, Payday is important. Important, too, was the contribution of the Pakistani workmen and foremen. These are the men who had never seen a scraper, a cat, or a power shovel. Yet, these are the men who operated a thousand pieces of specialized equipment, two shifts a day, six days a week. 
And these are the men who, in their best month, moved four million yards of earth fill. To meet the next important deadline, impounding of the river's waters behind the dam, work was going ahead at an equally rapid pace on both Jari Dam and the Sukian Dyke. Here at Jari, the main embankment was already established to a level of nearly 200 feet. The irrigation intake tunnel was nearly completed. as was the outlet and the tail race. As soon as the levels of all embankments were of sufficient height, impounding could begin. The gates at the upstream end of the diversion tunnels were closed on February 21st, 1967, and the lake began to rise behind the dam. It took just one month for the lake level to reach the spillway elevation, and on March 21st, the first water passed over the giant structure. job at Mangler was filled. All told, the contractor would eventually place 145 million cubic yards of fill on the three dams. Two ships were now utilizing a fleet of 75 wagons of 100 ton capacity and 80 scrapers, each with a capacity of 40 cubic yards. lake, riprap was placed on the upstream banks. Now the various aspects of the project were nearing completion, and as each was finished, it was turned over to the West Pakistan Water and Power Development Authority, who would now be responsible for its operation. Fill work on the main dam was completed in June 1967, almost five years after initial excavation had started some 375 feet below on the riverbed. A month later, Jari Dam received a certificate of completion. And at the same time, a special ceremony was held and the main spillway was placed under Wapta's control. Now, work at the powerhouse became critical. Pakistan wanted electricity. The sooner the better. Engineering crews rushed to finish final tests on the generators. 